It is definitively casserole season. <laughs> Fall is here and just even driving down the road right now, the leaves are so pretty, so pretty. Which definitely makes you feel like you want those like cozy casseroles. But another reason that it is casserole season is that weeknights are busy. Busy, busy, busy. I wore, I didn't wear an apron today so you can see my shirt and it says, sorry, can't, football, bye. <laughs> and that is true, I put it on this morning and my daughter said, oh mom, that is kind of true. That is really true right now. My only regret with, with this shirt is that it is green. I should have got navy because of my son's school, like the football team's colors, like hello, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> I just thought, oh, that's a really great green. I would look good in that. Well, you do look I do, that, it's especially really with like, your cute hair I and know. all the things, but yes, it is kind of perfect. It is kind of perfect and it's very true, which makes freezer meals in general a godsend right now and casseroles, yes, because I can throw it in the oven or sometimes in the slow cooker. You can do casseroles in the slow cooker sometimes. And then when he gets off the bus, we can eat and then we can be heading back out to football in no time flat because it's already done. When it comes to casseroles, shepherd's pie is kind of the quintessential. Like, oh yeah. It's so homey and comforting. So this recipe is for my mom's shepherd's pie recipe, which when we phoned her and asked her for the recipe, she was kind of like, I don't have one. I just throw things in and whatever, you know. Which is like, I think it's kind of the purpose of shepherd's pie. Like it is a, you know, you have some leftover potatoes, you got some leftover vegetables, you throw them together. Uh, disclaimer, we're in Alberta. We say shepherd's pie for everything, whether it's beef or lamb. And I know that this is the actually purists out there. cottage pie. We get it. It's not lamb, so we do know. But here in Alberta where we live, in Canada, it is just referred to as shepherd's pie, even though it's ground beef. So don't hate us in the comments. We know. We know. We've heard it already. <laughs> so you can still use lamb in this, but we're gonna use beef, you know. And my mom's shepherd's pie always has cream corn. It doesn't have like throw the vegetables in that you have left over. It's always cream corn, but there's a bit of a twist on that. So we'll get to this. So to make this shepherd's pie, we're going to brown our ground beef or you can use a veggie beef or Mexican veggie beef for this. Then we're gonna add in some minced onion, get that all cooked up. Then we're gonna mix in some tomato paste, Worcestershire sauce, salt, and pepper, and we're gonna lay that ground beef mixture down in a casserole dish, or you can use a foil baking dish. Next, we're gonna mix together some cream corn, and the little trick here is to mix in some drained kernel corn, so it just thickens it up a bit, makes it a bit chunkier. We're gonna lay a layer of our mixed corn down, and then we're gonna add some mashed potatoes. Now, to make the mashed potatoes, we used 10 potatoes, chopped those up, we mixed them once they were cooked with some butter and sour cream, and then we have lay our mashed potatoes down on top of those other layers. Now, if you happen to have some leftover mashed potatoes, you can use those. It doesn't have to be my exact mashed potatoes that I've used here. Then we're gonna to top this with some foil, and get that into the freezer. Now, for this, you could also make little individual ones. Oh yeah. You could make these in the small foil trays. The only thing that I would say if you're gonna make them into individual ones is if you're not gonna be using them within the next few weeks, then what you would wanna do is put a layer of plastic wrap before you put the foil lid on those trays because that's gonna make it so that you don't get freezer burn. You wanna put that plastic wrap directly on the food so that there's no air in there. And then that will mean that they'll keep for three to six months in the freezer, which is gonna be awesome to be able to pull those out and have them like whenever you want, just bake them up in the oven. So yeah, this is one where on the day you go to make it, you just pop that in the oven. You can cook it from frozen, but it'll take a fair bit longer if you cook it from frozen, or you can thaw it first, which is what we always suggest. Then you'll get a more even cook and it doesn't take as much time in the oven. And of course you can top this with ketchup if you want, or hot sauce, or however you like to eat your cottage or shepherd's pie. I have never put ketchup or hot sauce mm -hmm. on my shepherd's pie. I've no I guess maybe because 
it's got the tomato paste in there or it's got yeah it's just never occurred to me to do that i bet you the people that like that really like that uh, my kids are a little crazy about ketchup on shepherd's pie yeah that's good this is one of these dishes you know i say it's my mom's shepherd's pie recipe which it is but it's one of these things where i actually never made it for myself until Christy and I were doing meals and we were like, we really do need a shepherd's pie recipe in the club. And I was like, I'll call my mom and get hers. <laughs> the reason I never made it for myself is when my kids were really little and my mom was wanting to help out, she would sometimes say, hey, can I make you a shepherd's pie and drop it off? And then my kids would, she'd make a huge one. Right. Like she would double what, what this is, make this massive, like in this, Big roaster. Yeah. Yeah. And then we could, on that first day, we would eat it for dinner. And then throughout the week, the kids could have leftovers for lunch or dinner. And I didn't really have to worry as much about cooking. So it was such a blessing for me to have that when the kids were younger. And that's why I never had to make it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. Your mom is the dishes fairy and she's a shepherd's pie fairy, which is like very lucky of you. My mom is awesome. She is awesome. She's still helping with our kids and with our life. She's just... Hey, totally. Everybody needs a mom like my mom. It's true. She's really awesome. This next casserole is chicken enchiladas and kind of in the same vein as the shepherd's pie. Sometimes this is something that you can use with bits and bobs that you have left over in your kitchen. You need some chicken, you need some onions, some peppers, a can of beans. It's really easy to put together. Let's go. In a bowl, you're going to mix together your chicken, minced garlic, minced onion, diced red pepper, diced green chilies, some black beans that have been rinsed and drained, and your seasonings. You're going to add in cumin, oregano, chipotle chili powder, salt, and pepper. Mix it around in your bowl and get your tortillas ready. You are going to spread a line of the chicken mixture on each tortilla and roll and then place it seam side down in your casserole dish or foil tray. You're going to continue doing this until either your mixture is gone or your tortillas are gone. You're going to spread some enchilada sauce over top and layer it with a sprinkle of cheddar cheese. You're going to again put that plastic layer over top that Charlotte was talking about. Getting rid of that excess air is going to help out keeping it from freezer burn. You're going to add a layer of foil. When you go to cook these, you're going to remove that foil and remove the plastic wrap. Very and then, important step. A very important step. You can replace the foil and then throw it into your oven. These are so great for families, for those crazy nights like I was talking about where you are barely in the door and barely out the door because it's they walk in the door and you can set it on the table and it's done and you didn't have to break a sweat that day and honestly this is stuff this is something I've totally served for company this is a really great recipe it is awesome and I know that you often talk about how you will throw together enchiladas mm -hmm. with leftover chicken from a lot of our different sort of Mexican inspired yes. chicken marinades that we have. And yeah, this just works so well. It totally does. And if you wanted to do the chicken enchiladas for one or two, mm -hmm. what you can do is do that exact same mixture that Christy was talking about in the bowl. And then you just use smaller flour tortillas and you can fit these in one of those small foil trays as well. And then you can have for work lunches, for dinners, whenever you have the craving for chicken enchiladas, <laughs> like they're already done. And we haven't said it already, but the best gift you can give yourself is to double these. Oh yes. I mean, especially like the shepherd's pie slash cottage pie. If you're going to make the mashed potatoes, you might as well like make more mashed potatoes. And then you're just, it's, it's not double the work to make two of these. And then you can have them if you want, you can have one that night and one in your freezer for like a month down the road, or you can have them both in your freezer and just have them for those really crazy busy weeknights. Like if you're running to football, or volleyball, because <laughs> Christy's doing both of those right I now. I am living in my car these days, and he's enjoying it, I'm enjoying it. It is only a seven minute drive to the school. That's nice. It is nice, but what's funny is I, I get him for seven minutes at a time. Right. And honestly, that's, that's nice. Seven minutes <laughs> there in the morning for volleyball when we're tired and a little bit groggy, seven minutes 
there for football. He comes home on the bus. Seven minutes there for football, seven minutes home. Sometimes he drives because he has his learner's license. And so I'm a little more awake for those, but it's just... <laughs> It's just really nice to spend time with him, even though it's only seven minutes at a time. It is like right now, four days a week, plus then weekends with games and with tournaments, tournaments you know. So I'm getting a lot of bonding time with my 14-year-old son, and it's been really, really awesome. And they say actually that it's really good, especially with teen boys or boys in general, to do like that side by side. Yes, shoulder time. to shoulder yes. time. Yes, because they're that, more likely to talk. That's to when you. they start talking. And the other day, I have to tell you, it is so funny. I can't even tell you the what he said to me, but you know when when little kids start learning about dinosaurs and then they walk in and they tell you everything they've ever heard about a dinosaur and then they do it about Minecraft <laughs> and then they do it about space. He's still in the space stage. And so I, I don't know, I don't remember what he said, but it was, and I mean, now he is, the older he's getting, the bigger the words are. And he is throwing stuff at me. Like, I'm like, he wants to be an engineer. And I'm like, you need to go be an astronaut. <laughs> you need to go work for NASA or the Canadian Space Program or something. And, and I just think, man, you're such a nerd. <laughs> and I love it so much. And um, yeah, and I, gosh, I just love those seven minute drives. That's all. <laughs> and you're learning a lot more about space than you ever I am not imagined. retaining a darn thing about space, but uh, you know what? He keeps talking. I'll keep listening. I will never stop that. The other night, we had the most incredible Northern Lights show. Oh, yeah. I will actually put up some photos that my husband took on his phone. And actually, he has video too. So what I'm showing you is literally what we saw. I had been at the hospital that night. Uh, one of our daughters does hospital treatments once every four weeks, and it's a long thing. It's like, you know, five hours-ish that you're there. And so we were getting back, and it's 11 at night, and like nobody wants to be getting in from the hospital at 11 at night. Yeah. You're just so tired. But that's what we came home to. Like we came home to the most amazing Northern Lights show. And my husband was outside anyway because he and one of our sons were redoing our deck, sort of. Rearranging. They, rearranging. They moved like the steps from one, like they removed the steps over here and they moved them over here and they moved this over. And basically we looked into the cost of getting a new deck and realized like, we're just going to rearrange instead. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just maybe take out the rotting boards and replace them with boards that aren't rotting, like that yeah. kind of thing. So anyway, my husband was out there doing that and really that late at night. And so at first we didn't notice them because he had the lights on outside. But then once we shut those off, oh my goodness, we were treated what a to show. such a show. So I've heard that it's like the Northern Lights this particular year are the They're best crazy. in 50 years because of some kind it, of space thing. I will tell you about it because I was, I was actually reading about this and I told him. Um, it's every 20 to 25 years is okay, what it is. Okay. And I have lived in this part of the world like my whole life. So I re actually remember being 22, 23 years old and driving to Cold Lake from Edmonton in the middle of the night with a friend because we had gone to the bar and I don't know, it's a long story, <laughs> but and we were going to see his parents and it, we had such a show and it was right, there was a cluster of them in those couple of years right there where we're entering this cluster again. So it's good this year, it was pretty good last year, it's gonna be great again next year. What a thing to see, what a treat. I am actually signed up for something called Aurora Watch. Oh yeah. And they're free emails and they email you when there's gonna be Northern Lights. And sometimes I'll go out and it's not like, and I can't see them. We're not up late enough. Yeah, and like sometimes it's just the cloud cover or, yeah. you know, and sometimes the email comes in at three in the morning. Well, I'm not up checking my email at three in the morning, generally speaking. <laughs> I will see it and then forget. Right. And then I'll go to bed at 10 or 10.30 and totally forget. Did I tell you about my daughter coming home at midnight? This was a few weeks ago. I was laying in bed, I could hear her car coming in to like on the driveway, we have a gravel driveway and I could hear it crunch. And then I heard her calling my son's name from outside. And so she's like, psst, psst. And I'm like, what is she, what are they up to? <laughs> are I, they being sneaky? <laughs> I thought maybe she hit a deer or the cat was dead or something outside <laughs> and she needed his help. So she, he didn't come to the window cause she actually came in the house in I'm the like, dark. Your, your default was dead animal. <laughs> 
is that your well, default? But okay. Well, I was thinking she hurt, crunched her car. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. that that would only be a deer or maybe another car, I guess. And so, so she came in and knocked on his door, and I am laying there awake, listening to all of this happening down the hall. And they went outside, and I'm like, "What are they doing?" So I put my um, house coat on, and I went outside, and they are looking at the northern lights. And I, I'm not going to lie, there was a little bit of a sense of relief. Yeah. Because, oh, it's the northern lights. It wasn't a deer. It wasn't anything nefarious. It wasn't anything that she needed help with that she couldn't tell the parents. That, you know. It was like the most wholesome it thing. It was the super most wholesome thing. She sees something beautiful and wants to share it. I know. And so we went and got chairs because our necks were getting sore. And so. It was it was really beautiful and really great. And I think that was the first time my son had ever actually seen really great northern lights because yeah. of the email and then I forget or you know, he's in bed and our or, son that was working on the deck with my husband was like, I think this is the first time that I've seen them. And at least the best. I can remember. And they've yeah. been so good this year. Yeah, they're they're beautiful. <laughs> they really are. <laughs> Alright, so from Northern Lights to another casserole. This next one I'm really excited about. I'm always excited about it. And actually, I was like, oh, I need to eat this soon. <laughs> it's just, it's just so good. It is so good. All right, so this is our Tex-Mex lasagna. It is better with Mexican veggie beef than with regular beef, but it is still amazing with regular beef. It's just, if you want to actually have it like the authentic Charlotte way, <laughs> Make it with Mexican veggie beef, <laughs> but cook the Mexican veggie beef up, like brown it, even though it's already cooked and doesn't need the browning, but that gives you the right texture. Okay, now that you have all the information for your protein of choice, what you're going to do is you're going to take your browned and cooled ground beef and you're going to mix that together with some taco seasoning, minced onions, green chilies, and some cheddar cheese soup, which I know sounds weird, but just stick with me, trust me. Some salsa, you wanna use a chunky salsa for this, and some shredded cheddar and mozzarella cheese. You're gonna put a really thin layer of that down into your casserole dish or foil tray. Then you're gonna put a layer of oven ready lasagna noodles. It's important that you use the oven ready ones so that they cook up right in this. So you don't need to cook them up before and drain them and worrying and worry about breaking them and all that stuff that you have to worry about when you cook lasagna noodles. Then you're going to lay some more of that sauce, about a third of it, then some more noodles, then another third of the sauce, some more noodles and the rest of your sauce. You're going to drizzle that with a bit of water and then you're gonna to top it with some more shredded cheddar and shredded mozzarella. If you want, you can use like a blend of those cheeses if it's easier for you. Then you're gonna lay some plastic wrap down on there and a layer of foil and get that in your freezer. We suggest you put a note on your label that reminds you to take off that plastic wrap. On the day you go to make this, you thaw it and you take off that plastic wrap Put your foil back on and you're just gonna bake this for about 50 minutes in your oven. Serve it. If you're in a real hurry, you can say, hey, it's got green chilies and some tomatoes with the salsa in there, so that counts as vegetables. If you're not in a hurry, you can serve this with a salad. Recently in our Facebook group, somebody had just made the Tex-Mex lasagna and when she told her family, they were kind of unsure. And she's like, right, because what's wrong with regular? What's lasagna? wrong with? There's nothing wrong with regular lasagna, and so this is just a twist, right? And um, they were they were gobsmacked. It was a huge hit, and she's like, thank you for this recipe. So that was nice. Yeah, this is one that I've been making for like decades, but it just keeps getting better with time. Isn't that funny? <laughs> I think it's just, but honestly, it's the Mexican veggie beef that takes it up a little bit because it's got its own seasonings in there. And so then you add the taco seasoning into that. And then the cheddar cheese soup, like who knew? Who knew? I don't use it in any other recipes. I used to have a recipe that used it, but I didn't like that recipe, so I don't make it anymore. And, but other than, like, I've, I haven't even really seen it in any other recipes, and yet it's the secret to this. <laughs> it's kind of like your own personal queso. 
Yes. Maybe. It kind of It is. kind of gives it that kick, right? That's mm -hmm. really great. No, you should try this. And if you are not a member of our Facebook group, you should really check that out. It is the nicest little corner of Facebook you have ever seen. Actually, it's not little. We have over 80,000 members <laughs> yes. in the group, but the link for that is down below in the description. So check that out. This chili casserole is the first casserole that we're talking about today that we are not going to make in a tray of any kind. We're making this sucker in a bag and it is going to lay nice and flat and you're going to stick it in your freezer. Lots of room. You're going to love this and it's so delicious. Oh my goodness. When Charlotte told me about this casserole at first, it's called chili casserole and I'm like, so it's like chili? And she's like, no, no, it's just chili flavored and it's got rice in it. It's like so good. So just stick with me here. We'll get to this recipe. In your large freezer bag, you're going to add your ground beef that has been browned and cooled. You're going to add in minced onion, a can of diced tomatoes, some minced garlic, some green chilies, some water, that chili powder I was talking about, and a bit of salt and pepper. You can optionally add canned corn as well into this to make it maybe more chili like i don't know and then you're going to get the excess air out of that you're going to you're going to seal it up and then you're going to take one cup of long grain rice and put that in a medium size like a quart size freezer bag get the air out of that as best you can too and seal it up then you're going to staple these bags together before you freeze it so that when you take it out you already have exactly what you need measured out. Like we could not make this any easier for you. So you're going to allow it to thaw. You're going to mix that rice into your casserole and then you can sprinkle it with some cheese if you would like, you don't have to. You're going to bake it covered at 375 for one hour. The rice is gonna cook up right inside there. It is gonna be very casserole-y and very chilly, but not like eating chili, it's so great. It is so great. I love that the rice cooks up right in it. And yeah, it's, it's like a one pot. Easy. Yes, it is. And totally less like dishes. A one pot. <laughs> <laughs> this next recipe is so great for like winter or fall because it's like comfort casserole. But you definitely, definitely want to make two or three or four of these at a time because this is this one's a little bit more work. It's kind of like the shepherd's pie in that you have multiple steps. And if you're gonna do it, you might as well make four. Yeah, right? And then you can have them anytime you want. Because for this, you're gonna start with cooking your pasta. Now, we recommend that you undercook your pasta about two minutes, according to the package directions. That way, when it bakes up on the day you go to serve it, you're not gonna end up with mushy pasta. You're gonna get that pasta drained and you want to add that right into your casserole dish or your foil tray. Then in a bowl, you're going to mix together some ricotta, egg, some mozzarella cheese, Parmesan cheese, fresh basil, and some Italian seasoning, red pepper, fl red pepper flakes, and salt and pepper. You're going to mix that all together and you're going to lay that on top of your pasta. Then you're going to put a layer of pasta sauce or you can use the red sauce recipe in the Freezer Meals 101 Club. And then you're gonna add some browned ground sausage. Now, if you like things spicy, you're gonna wanna use a spicy Italian sausage. And if you like the mild, of course you wanna use the mild. Then you're going to stir this all together just right in your casserole dish. And then you want to top it with some shredded mozzarella and a little bit of Parmesan cheese. You're going to cover that one with plastic wrap and foil and freeze it. When you go to make this, you want to, of course, remove your plastic wrap, thaw it, cover it again with your foil, and you bake it. It bakes up pretty quickly, uh, 25 minutes, half hour and then you're gonna uncover it and bake it for another five or 10 minutes so that the cheeses on top can melt and it's like ooey gooey good. It's like, it's just hearty and it's like, it is a little bit of a heavier one. So you probably want to serve a side salad with this, mm -hmm. but yeah, it really is just like comfort food. And this one feeds a crowd. Yes. Yeah, you had mentioned to, you could easily serve this with company. You could easily serve this when you have, okay, last night, my daughter had, she had called and said, I'm gonna have some friends over after school. Well, that's fine. 
And then when I called her back later to see how many, there was like six extra kids at my house. <laughs> Plus me and my husband and our son. I'm like, I have a lot of people to feed right now. And I had taken out a little package of meatballs from our mega session. Oh no. And I'm like, that is not gonna do it. No. That is not gonna do it. And I did not have the big ZD sitting in my freezer. It was too late. It wouldn't have, it would have been hard to cook up without a little bit of notice because you want to thaw it first. I really believe in fully thawing my casseroles first. Um, you can cook them from frozen, but they overcook on the outside while they're still kind of frozen in the middle. I just, I can't deal with that. So I just allow it to thaw. If I had known, I would have happily even made one of these yeah. or a couple of them just to have them to be served. Um, and so I did the old thing that we kind of, rail against i bought pizza <laughs> and you know what's funny is you actually have something in my freezer that you forgot to take home the other night that would have fed that whole group what it's the barbecue beef on a bun oh yes it's but huge but that the same been, idea that would have needed to be in the slow cooker i would have all day. needed yeah, right. you know you know you're right do you know what i'm ready to do i am ready to buy an instant pot oh you could just borrow mine and see if you like it. Well, I have a couple of times. Yeah. But I used my brother's when I made the Cincinnati chili. Okay, yeah, I had yeah. gone to see my brother. I went home for a funeral and I was staying with him. So I took food and there was a potluck at this funeral. It was a backyard kind of thing. So it was very informal. I wouldn't say there's normally potlucks happening at funerals. <laughs> well, you know. But in my family, you know. I, so I didn't have a lot of time because I had been in town all day with my mom. And I'm like, I am going to try the Instant Pot. And I did it, and he had a button for, for beans and chili, and I pushed that button, and it, it made the chili. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was really good, it was perfect. So I'm like, ha, ah, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if I could really make a go. I don't need another appliance. No. Well, this is why you should borrow mine for a while. I will maybe borrow yours for a while. We'll because see. I never use it unless it's to cook up just plain chicken if I need it to right, shred which is chicken so for funny. recipes. Yeah, yeah, I know. But I'm a little afraid of it because one time, like, it sprayed my ceiling with oh. the sauce. And ever since then, I've been, like, and me standing on the counter to try to wash yeah. my ceiling, like, because I'm short. And, uh, even a lat, like, I don't know. Anyway, so I've been a little gun shy about the Instant Pot ever since then. Mm -hmm. And my friend Michelle had to walk me through, like, just cooking plain chicken in it. And now I feel really confident about that. Eight minutes, I know exactly which buttons to push. I know what to do after. I know what not to touch. But it, she really had to talk me through it because I was afraid of this. It, it also, when it sprayed my ceiling, it was like boiling hot. Oh yeah, it's dangerous, yeah. right? So yeah. So it was not a good experience, especially for like my first time doing a real meal in the Instant Pot. So a lot of our freezer meals include the Instant Pot directions. It's because I've Googled them. Yeah, yeah. I am afraid to touch my Instant Pot, but you are welcome to it. Does it have a rice cooker on it? I don't know, we'll have to go see. I don't know much about my Instant Pot because I hardly use it. I've also been like flopping about the, I, I can cook rice on the stove. I never burn it. I always do it right. I have never ever looked at my appliances and thought, oh, I need a rice cooker. But people, if, if people, people say, have them, swear love them, them, love them. And my yeah. brother loves it because it has a function, a rice cooker function, and it will keep it warm. So it doesn't have to be timed perfectly or anything. And I'm like, okay, okay, maybe, 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 maybe. we'll see. I think they have them at Costco. Um, the Instant Pots. And are they Instant Sometimes. Pot brand? I kind of want to go with the OG, but okay. Know. In the comments, please tell me what your favorite Instant Pot is. Cause I know that there's others, right? Like mm -hmm. Ninja has one and there's all kinds of brands. And tell me what you like about it. And I already have an air fryer. I don't need the air fryer button on it. Right. And I have a six quart slow cooker. Mm -hmm. So I really only need to replace my six quart slow cooker. I don't need one of these seven or eight quart behemoths that won't fit in my drawer. I even think, I think it's right. tall. I don't think it's going to fit in my Mine drawer. Is really, really tall. I know. Yeah. The reason I suggested Costco is just because they have such a great return policy. Yeah, they do. So, and then if you have like that executive membership, then you get 2% back. That's true. So it's just a thought. I just got my check this but week. I, my husband went to Costco yesterday 
If you've watched the channel for a while, then you know that I avoid Costco actually, so it's funny that I'm suggesting Costco. Christy does our Costco shops when we do our mega sessions. Ooh, we did a mega session not that long ago. I'm gonna pop it up there. It was all new recipes, and that Cincinnati chili that she was talking about, it's in there. So anyway, when we do our mega sessions, Christy does the Costco shop, I do the other shop because I don't love the crowds at Costco. Yeah. I, the parking lot's great. Like they have extra no, space. They have extra space, but our Costco, it's busy. you have to park in the back corner sometimes. It's so busy. So busy. And I do not, I'm just not someone that likes crowds. I like, not just at Costco, anywhere. I'm not like, it's just not my thing. So that's why I kind of avoid Costco. But my husband went yesterday and he went because we need paper towels. <laughs> and so he's getting the Costco <laughs> giant thing of paper towels. And then he texts me and he says, paper towels sure got expensive. <laughs> and I like, I was driving at the time. So I didn't like, didn't read like yeah. beyond that. So I thought, oh, like I haven't been there in a really long time. Maybe paper towels got really expensive. Like, I don't know. And I also thought, because my husband doesn't often do the shopping. Right, that, he wouldn't have a gauge. Yeah, I just thought maybe he doesn't realize how much paper towels cost because he's maybe never bought them before. So I was kind of thinking that. So I didn't look until I got home. But I lo when I got home, I looked and he sent me a photo of his trunk full. Oh. He had not just gotten paper towels, like, <laughs> of course, and it, it it made me laugh so much because, like, yeah, he just does not often go. To and that's store. what happens at Costco, though. You go in for one thing. It does, and he bought dishes. And suddenly you've spent $800. And, like, the funny thing about that is, again, we recently did a video. I'm going to pop that up there. And we were talking about how my dishes got stolen, like my wedding dishes yeah, got stolen yeah, yeah, out yeah. of my in-laws' vehicle, and then the police recovered them, but they, it was not nearly the full set of dishes, and they surmised later that the thieves probably were using them and had them in their dishwasher along with our silverware. So we have these random number of dishes, so even like, we've got three bowls, we've only ever had three bowls, it's not because some have broken over the years. So we've been married 28 years and we've never had a full set of dishes. And like you can't serve company on three bowls. So we have Corel, like white, plain white Corel, and anybody that comes here, they get served on plain white Corel because that's what we have. It's totally fine. So we've talked over the years about getting actual, you can serve company with it kind of bowls and plates and whatever. What do you call that? Tableware, is that? Yeah. Yeah. Flatware, dinnerware. Dinnerware. Yeah. And, but never have. So yesterday my husband starts sending me pictures from Costco of like. Do you like this? Again, do you like this? I'm driving. So I'm like, whatever. Like. You choose. And he's colorblind. Mm -hmm. So this is brave of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was like, whatever you think. And so he got, there were these ones on sale. I don't know. They were like half off or whatever, but you could only get a maximum of two. So now like two boxes. So now we have enough to feed eight people, which is not even our immediate family. So, Christine, so I just said, I'm like, do you want me to go to Costco and buy you two more boxes? Cause then you can have 16. And that would feed our whole family. Yeah. When I bought mine, Mine are from Onida, mm -hmm. and they were um, being discontinued. So they were deeply discounted, but I bought 16. So I, right. I and I still have probably 14 big plates. Mm -hmm. I'm probably down to like 12 of my, my bread plates or whatever. I have almost all my cups because I really, I just had it in my head that all of your cups should match because I liked that it would match my bowls and everything. And so then people give you cups and I'm like, right. I don't want a cup because then I have to put it in there and I have to take one out mm -hmm. to make it. And then, and so finally I had so many, I just took all of my Anita cups and I put them in storage. And now my cup, my cup cupboard is all different ones, which is very not me. And I like it. It's okay. It's a season of my life. I will. I haven't forgotten about my other <laughs> mugs downstairs. Right. And they, they're okay down there. And then I will get them back. But when I retire or when, or when we hit it big on YouTube, like big <laughs> on YouTube, I'm going to get the things could be worse set. Oh, yes. My, yes. The little blue, they look like the little blue Dutch dishes and it's their porcelain. 
I think, and that I had a set of four and I, I dropped one and I cut my finger and I was working from home. It was during COVID. You still have a scar. I just oh, it's, saw it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I phoned Charla and I'm like, are you busy? Because I need to go to the hospital. And she just, we're neighbors. She just came just in. Went and picked her up. <laughs> and she had to drop me off. She couldn't come in with me because it was during lockdown. And I went and got myself all stitched, and up. stitched up. And she went and got groceries or something. And uh, she came and picked me back up and we went home. And I just had to call it for the day. I, it took me a long time to have, you know. Full mobility. Full mobility, and yeah, it's still not as strong as my other fingers, but. I found it ironic. No, don't worry. I we had a mega session. Ever. Yeah, we did. Oh, we yeah, had, and so I had. There's like band-aid band pictures. Or yeah, video I had wrapped it. Yeah, yeah. But it was year. well, obviously years ago, it was pandemic time, but I kind of laughed at her, but not that day. You have to wait a few days. If you're going to laugh during yes. something tragic, like, or that's not tragic, but during a crisis. Yeah. So I waited a few days, but then I was like, it's kind of ironic that it was like on your things could be worse. Yeah, things could be worse. <laughs> things <laughs> sure could be. <laughs> you it didn't cut my tendon. Things could be worse. Right? <laughs> so anyway, so Christy might go and get me if the Costco still has yeah. these things on sale. And because she might need to go there anyway, because I don't want her to make an extra trip. But if she's going there anyway, yeah, then she I will totally get me do more. that. And then I would have like a full set of dishes. Because I benefit from this too, you know. <laughs> right. And like the first time in 28 years that I would have matching dishes. And then I could invite Christy and her husband over for dinner and we could have. It like, wouldn't be on Corral. Not Corral. <laughs> Nothing against Corral. Corral's great. But, you know. Yeah. For company. My husband had also bought like just almost none of it was food. I'm going to say that. <laughs> there is milk and you know, fair enough. We need milk. And there was some juice. I think some berries. The rest of the trunk is filled you don't with need non food. food items. We have all the food. Like you don't need food. It's true. And to his credit, he had texted me and said, is there anything you need from Costco? Did he get you Madeline crackers, cookies? No, he did not. Because I will sometimes, if they are in, they don't always have them. Charlotte, would you like some Madeline crackers or cookies? I don't even ask her anymore. If they're there, I'll just buy them and bring them over. I do love them. It's been like at least a year since. Oh yeah, ago. it's probably time. Yeah. So anyway, okay. Sorry, we have digressed. A little. I'm not totally sorry. We haven't seen each other in a while, yeah. so you get to hear us talk because, <laughs> sorry, not sorry. I was showing her my dishes before we started this though. Oh, I'm gonna show you my dishes, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am. I'm not tall enough for this. <laughs> Do you see my dishes? <laughs> Here we go. Mikasa. Oh, let's turn it to the side. Is it? See better. I was going to say, is this the French? But they have it all. English. There you go. There you go. I it's French and English. Matchy, matchy dishes. Yeah. They're not corral. What are they? Mikasa. No, but stoneware. Oh, it's stoneware. stoneware. Have you I used see. stoneware before? No. I had some Corel stoneware, yeah. the big red plates, mm -hmm. and I just finally got tired of them because they were heavy. Oh, they are heavy. They are heavy. <laughs> As we're both holding up the box. We still have more recipes to get through, <laughs> so we should get to them. Sorry. If you're new here, this is kind of what we do. And that is why we now put the um, timestamps time so, so you can just... Fast uh, forward to the next recipe. Unless you want to hear about the china. <laughs> <laughs> or the, the place, the stoneware. <laughs> okay, so with stoneware, can I put them in the dishwasher? Yeah. And do they get like scratched up? Yeah, they can, but it's, um, it's like anything else. Like Corral doesn't because it's, it's made of different, because it's Corral. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, I thought that sometimes we would, it would maybe get marked up, but not, it, they'll chip more than anything. So what you could serve your company on this fancy, okay, it's not that fancy, but on your, your new, new Mikasa dishes is lazy chicken Parmesan casserole. And they will be so excited about your casserole. They probably won't care a whole lot about your dishes. It's true, serve it on Corral. It is a really, really good <laughs> casserole. So this is another one that goes into a bag. You're gonna start out with your chicken that has already been cooked and cubed and cooled. You're going to add it into your bag and you're going to pour in some pasta sauce, or if you are in the Freezer Meals 101 Club, you can get our exclusive red sauce, and this is a perfect place to use the red sauce. And then in, you're going to get out the excess air and seal it up. In a medium-sized bag, 
you are going to add two types of cheeses. You're going to add Parmesan cheese and shredded mozzarella cheese. You're going to mix those up, remove the excess air, and seal that bag. In another medium-sized freezer bag, you're going to add some panko breadcrumbs, if you have it, or regular if you don't, that's okay. And a little bit of olive oil and some Italian seasoning and a bit of salt and pepper. And you're going to mix that around so that all of the breadcrumbs get kind of coated in the oil and the seasoning. Then you're going to seal that up. And guess what? You're going to staple these all together and then freeze it. When you go to cook this, you'll allow it to thaw. You're going to put your big bag into the casserole dish. You're going to sprinkle your cheese on it. And then you're going to sprinkle your seasoned crumbs on top and they're going to get super crispy because of that oil and they're already panko so it's going to have this great crunch to it. The flavor in this is nuts. You're going to get this into your oven and cook it for 20-25 minutes at 350 and then we like to serve this one with actually I like to serve it with broad noodles instead of spaghetti. I don't know why I just like to serve it with the broad noodles and it's awesome. Funny, I like to serve mine with like rotini or penne. Oh. And then I usually have some bags of red sauce in the freezer. Mm -hmm. And so I'll take out an extra bag of red sauce and serve that on the pasta. And it's just so, so good. And it's like having chicken parmesan, which is one of the best things on the planet to eat without all of the extra work. It's so simple to make. Now, if you wanted to make this for one person, I forgot to tell you about how you would do that for the baked ziti and all of that, but baked ziti, you would just mix it together in a bowl and then spoon it into individual containers. They all work as individual servings. I would say the chili casserole cook first. Yes. And then divide it and it will just be a reheat. Which, yes. it has its own benefits for that as well. If, if you are really on the run and you need something fast, it is nice to have something that is a simple reheat for sure. Absolutely. And then for this lazy chicken parmesan, I make this one in individual servings all the time. I actually have some in my freezer this very minute. And what you do is you just put your chicken and red sauce down on the bottom of your trays. You lay them all out so you do this like an assembly line. It goes super fast. And then you top it with those cheeses and you mix together your breadcrumbs and whatever and, and top each one. So they're all done. Get the lids on those, get them in your freezer, and then you just bake them up in individual portions. So nice to have. So nice to have. Freezer meals in general are so nice to have. We feel so lucky, but it's a bit of work, right? Like, and it's a lot of planning. On the day, like on- Assembly the, day. Yes. Assembly day and prep day is a lot because we do them like all at once. You saw some of our mega sessions there where, you know, some of them were making over a hundred meals. Mostly we make over a hundred meals, but do you know what makes it easier is the Freezer Meals 101 Club because instead of taking each of these recipes and marking down each of the ingredients and making your shopping list, it does it for you. It is wonderful. We have 400 recipes in the Freezer Meals 101 Club and a lot of them are casseroles. And this is just a little, a few of the casseroles. There's like so many in there. And other things that aren't just casseroles, like- Skillet meals, slow cooker, mm -hmm. hot barbecue. Oh, we have some good. Really good barbecue meals. So you can make your meal plan. It will spit out an ingredients list for you and a prep list. You're gonna make your meals. We even have printable labels with the cooking instructions like you see in our videos. You can get that in the Freezer Meals 101 Club. And the best part is, then it's done. Then you don't have to like think about what's for, what's for dinner. And you can catch those sales. You know, you get a case lot sale, you can buy a couple of cases of diced tomatoes and you know you're gonna use them because you're making meals like this. It is really great. It's great for saving money, great for saving time, great for saving that mental load. And the other thing that's great for freezer cooking is doing it with a friend. Oh yeah. And I know that not all of you have a friend or neighbor, like a neighbor that's two doors down is like pretty much perfect for this, but not all of you have that situation. And so one of the things about the Freezer Meals 101 Club is that actually you don't have to cook alone because once a month, we do a live cooking class where we actually cook right along with you. And we're there in the chat to answer questions. Other people are there to answer questions. There's a lot of interaction and you do really feel like you're cooking with friends because you are. You totally are and it's the best and we're the luckiest.
<laughs> so you can find the information for that down below. And we really are the luckiest. I think we got we won the, the neighbor lottery, the friend lottery, Charlotte's brain when it comes to making recipes lottery. I won that. So it's his organization and her um, her willingness to go to Costco. <laughs> My willingness to go to Costco. Everybody, you know, that's a special skill. <laughs> So we hope that you have a really great day and we're so glad that you could join us today for casserole day. We're gonna put a video right over there with 30 ground beef recipes. Just in case you were able to get a sale on ground beef and wanna take full advantage of it, you can go check that out. Thank you so much for being with us today and happy cooking.